it's not. Practice squad money ain't nothing. So no. Um, let's move on. on. Let's move on from there. We will continue the football discussion, but uh, we're going to move this into more of the, I guess, college and high school situation. We're going to talk a little recruiting and whatnot. Um, oh, by the way, Matt said they get cut, look good a season somewhere else, and then tank. It's all up in the air. Yeah, it's definitely up in the air. Uh, it is definitely that. So, earlier today, California announced they are deli- uh, delaying, good Lord, delaying high school football until December 2020 or January 2021. And this is uh, this is a bit of a problem. Just a little bit of a problem here. By doing this, like there, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is what they're doing. I'm real curious what recruiting is going to look like. Uh, in California, it's set up a little bit differently. And, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe that out there, you know, there's a lot of talent-heavy schools that kids don't get to play, really, until their junior and senior year because there are so many, and and it's not a ton, but in these So many of the prep schools out there are breeding grounds for for just just crazy amounts of of what ends up being college football talent, yeah. And on top of that, uh, Corey Foreman. You you don't start four years out there because because there's a five-star in front of you every year. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely that. Corey Foreman, number one recruit in the country uh, per two, uh, 247 Sports, et cetera, expected to go to USC. Uh, he was committed to Clemson. It was a big deal that we talked about earlier in the quarantine because it, you don't decommit from Clemson. Like, it just doesn't happen. But he came out today, and he said, if they make me choose between my senior season or going to college, please believe I'm headed to my first camp. No questions asked. Like, he ain't sticking around to play – in the fall or in the uh, in the spring, that's no, just not happening. You? There, the way that college recruiting has set up, there are a ton of early enrollees. A lot of these kids get their academics knocked out of the way. They get all the credits and whatnot, and that way they can go on and go and be in camp for their college in January. That is their plan to go on and get ready for the upcoming college season, because at that point it doesn't matter, you know. And that not every kid is Corey uh, uh, Corey Foreman. But this is a massive deal. Like, there's a lot of kids that are not going to play their senior high school year. And, well, it's going to open up opportunities for other players. This is kind of a disaster. I just want to know how many kids are going to fall through the cracks because of this. I mean, it's, it's a good question. Because, uh, honestly, signing day is in February. Like, <laughs> I mean... Well, that, 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 I mean, the, uh, none of, now, let's understand... We kind of both had a feeling we weren't going to get any high school football this year. And when I was thinking that, I was trying to figure out how the hell is that going to affect recruiting? Uh, a lot. Because yeah, if you didn't show out in your junior year. I mean, Mississippi has said they're going to play high school football. But we know all this stuff is fluid. They're going to play it as of right now. We don't know that they're going to play it in two weeks. Yeah. We don't know that, you know, come October – Third, they're going to be playing. I, you know, we just don't know. No, we we have no idea as it and, stands. And, and if we don't get high school, because I don't think California is the only state, and I think it's going to be many, many, many that follow. And yeah. I don't know that I disagree with them in the sense that high school football, for the most part, doesn't bring in real revenue. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's not, not college football. Yeah, it's not that. It's not. Uh, it's not college football. What makes at these all. schools? What makes these big prep schools so much money is great kids come out of there and then they give back, and that's um, that. Your your alumni base for some of these prep schools is just ridiculous. Uh, our buddy Matt on YouTube, he said, "Yes, California had some big time talent, and you sat the bench until your senior year to play." And he he was out there. He knows. Um. Michael Fritch jumped in. He said, A&M recruit already announced he's skipping his senior season and enrolling earlier. Can't imagine he's the first. Uh, he's an ESPN 300 defensive tackle, Victory Vaca. He announced Monday he's skipping his senior season. He's going to enroll at Texas A&M in January. Uh, he, I was just about to say, none of these kids can enroll until January, right? Correct. I mean, so you, it's you not gotta, like they can go ahead and enroll now. Yeah, you, you got to – I mean, you got to go ahead and, and get your credits knocked out. But you know, like, you and I talk about this all the time. Okay, we had stuff to keep us busy when we were in high school, and when we didn't, we found trouble all the time. 
how many of these kids, and that's that's not that's not poor kids, it's not black kids or white kids, that's every kid who has nothing else to do and has lots of free time. What, what if, if you got nothing else uh, to What are to these keep kids going to do for six months until they can go enroll in college? I, I guess they're going to do and, remote And they're going to be doing a lot of e-learning, I'm sure. So it's not like they're going to be going to school and have any real structure in their life. No. What kind of shape are they going to be in? Who's watching them to make sure they stay in shape? I mean, that's a lot to put on a 17-year-old kid. Oh, 100%. I mean, this is— That's a lot. You were responsibility to say on your own, by yourself, with no coach, with, with no leadership whatsoever, you be ready to get here in January and play D1 college football. They Well, the good news is if they get there in January, then they've got until, you know, the next yeah, fall to get, get ready. Yeah, if they get there in January and they've packed on 40 pounds of fat. Yeah, then it becomes a problem. It's not just a workout in, in an offseason. I can get that off. Your body is changing. Their body is still developing. Yeah. No, it's definitely that. I just think that that's unsafe. At some point in time, it's better to at least allow these kids, if we're not going to play the sport, allow them access to the facilities, allow them coaches and trainers to come in and and say you can use the facilities. It's not like I know these prep schools, okay? I I coached at some of them in the Mississippi Delta, very different than the ones in California. They're not 50-man rosters. They're not 90-man rosters, all right? They're just not big schools when it comes to the the amount of kids. These seniors especially, they they get access to the facilities, and the coaches can be there. They can wear masks. They can still work out. They can still train all season long. We need somebody with a thumb on them making sure they're minding their P's and Q's, and they're taking care of what they need to take care of. Because I, you and I know, you leave seventeen-year-olds alone with with no real structure and no one watching them and making them. How many of these kids that have potential for real greatness just fall by the wayside? And nobody's going to miss them because there are so many kids out there fighting for those few spots. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I mean, it, high school football is so incredibly important, and it's what you talked about. It's not just the game itself. It's, it is it's the, not the game. It's the it's opportunity. what it does for the kids. Yeah, it is the opportunities it creates. It is the structure. It is, you know, it, it allows kids to get out of bad spots and, you know, ones that are in good spots to propel even more into greatness. Like, it's, it gives them the chance to be something bigger and better. I, you and I have agreed on this, and I believe we've talked about it on the show. Like, we, we both think that kids should be in school, and, and this is a big part of it. I mean, that, that structure is so incredibly important. We're two different people, okay? You come from a, a moderately stable family, and yeah. I came from a completely destructive and chaotic family, okay? I had sports, and the people that played sports with me were my family. They provided a stability that I didn't get from my family, all right? My mom worked two jobs to take care of me, and the only man in my life that took care of me died when I was 12, yeah. okay? I was on my own. Without the family of my friends, I had nothing. And you take that away from some of these 16, 17, 18 year olds, and dangerous things can happen. You have definitely got I that just right. don't think that's smart. And the ones that have great families, those are the ones that provided me the family. Yeah. They gave me the stability. Their moms and dads stepped up where my mom couldn't and my dad wouldn't. Yeah. And they they took care of you. And that's uh, Michael Fritz jumps in on Twitch. He said, the importance of high school football goes far beyond football, it changes kids' futures. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not just the game. It's so much more than that. College, we're having a different conversation. It's a $100 billion business where the kids get very little, okay? Yeah. High school is not that. It's so important. And that's I'm okay that's if you not don't want to play because it's not safe. I'm 100% okay. We got to find – we can't just lock the door to these kids. Now, I don't know what they're doing, what they're not, but we can't just lock the door to these kids. That's, that's not saying that college football is not important – outside of the money situation, right? The money is a whole different thing. Oh, yeah. But, no, but college football but, provides opportunities for them to get to that next level, which is incredibly important. Uh, Michael said, coaches are father figures and role models. In a lot of cases, sports are the only structure that they will ever have. Yeah, it, it's incredibly true. Some of them, that's not the case. But a lot of them it is. So that's – we – setting this back, pushing this back to December, January, uh, it's not every recruit. There's a lot of recruits, though – that are just not going to play football for an entire year. And Let me tell you what insane. we're going to see. The next year in 2021, you're going to see some unbelievable JUCO teams. I'm right. talking yeah. 
you're going to see some badass JUCO teams because there's going to be a lot of talent that falls through the cracks. Now you've got that right. Uh, a lot. And they're going to end up at JUCOs because they don't have anywhere else to go. And they're going to be JUCO football is going to be real competitive and probably real fun to follow. Joseph said, do you really need the classes during the day to practice football at the end of the day? Um, well, here's the I deal. don't if, think so, but no. I don't know these certain schools' rules. I'm not making them for them. I'm not a headmaster of these schools. If the school is shut down, um, then they're not going the, to allow it, – it's it's a group of more than the allotted number allowed by the government, and that's the problem. So, I just wonder, are there that many seniors on the team? And if they're not, then then you can weigh that out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean if you've got 15 or 20 seniors – then you can say on Mondays and Wednesdays, you, you know, seven come, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you six come, and, you know, there's two coaches here to watch you, and we're under whatever allotment, and we can, you know, put some of our – come every day, and some of you work outside on drills. Some of you work inside waiting, we're lifting weights, and we keep the numbers small enough, and we're all in a lot of little groups. That's the one beauty of football – is you can work on a lot of different things in a lot of different places at the same time. Yeah. No, you, and you and that would that keep right. you, I mean, what's your number? As long as it's six or smaller, I can find a way to get 20 seniors because there's not going to be more than 20 seniors in, in, a, in a class. I mean, we went to a school of over 300 people and all the branches football team, you know, didn't have, I don't know, I, I bet less than 15 people on it that were seniors. Uh, you may be right about that. I, I feel like it was more, but who knows? I mean, no, it gets small. You got a ton of sophomores, a lot more juniors, and then a small section of seniors. Yeah, and we we talked a lot about you know recruits and whatnot. A lot of these guys are not going to be recruits, but this is still structure. This is still family. That's, like, that's Chris it. was it's not so a, much more than just it. Now it affects those big kids. It affects yeah. those top kids. But, the, but this is way bigger than just them. Yeah. Way bigger than that. Uh, Joseph Gomez said, "Didn't the top twins just sign with Alabama?" Uh, yeah, Tommy and James Brockermeyer. Uh, Tommy was like are they the twins or just brothers. Cause no, I thought they're, they were different grades. No, they're, they're twins. They're twins. Both seniors, okay. both, both committed. Uh, I want to say James is a top 100 guy. Maybe, he maybe one like of them is 60. just so much taller than the other yeah, one. What, they're not identical. Tommy one is six, like six. And taller than the other one. Yeah. Tommy is six, six. And, uh, James is like six, three, six. Yeah. Yeah. Um, six, two, six, three. I was about to so, say there's a, there's a big difference in height. Left tackle and center. Just associated that with, with, yeah. uh, Different ages. Yeah. No, they uh they they're twins, but they are they're not identical twins. So they're uh, they're definitely that. But yeah, they they both uh committed on Friday night or Saturday or something. It was over then, the weekend. Yeah, and then yesterday Terrence Ferguson, uh offensive guard from Georgia, committed and that bumped Alabama up to the number two class in the country. So uh, I don't know, not that we're gonna get into recruitment too much, but it's funny that recruiting right now for college football for next year is the classes are so small as of right now, one or two players completely changes your rank from 20th to second or 14th to second or wherever you were. Like, you know, you could have an unbelievable recruiting class right now. And some of those can swing quite a bit. Drastic. Yeah. Right now. Drastic. Right now. Here's, here's the funny thing about it. Like Ohio state has 19 kids committed right now. And it's, I mean, we're in July. There are more kids committed as of right now than in that in this time in the last two time or last two years combined. Like yeah. it's it's really insane how many kids are committing, but they're going to completely different places. Like you, you've still got your your big wigs, right? Georgia's only got ten commits right now. You know yeah. that they're going to be up there, but you know North Carolina's got eighteen commitments or nineteen or whatever it is. Ohio State's got nineteen. Alabama's got fifteen. LSU's got sixteen. Like. Yeah. It, there's still room for players to go, but there are a ton of kids that have already committed because they know, like, if you get an offer, you better commit where you're going to go because it, if you don't have, you know, senior season, if you don't have whatever, uh, there may not be a spot for you if you don't take the slot right now. So a lot of them are saying, you know what, I know where I want to go. Just make a decision and let's go. Uh, Monster X Gaming 652 on Twitch jumps in. Got some, uh, some off-topic conversation. He said, the NFL is saying you and your health can go F yourself. I don't know if that's really the case. I think they're just not prepared. <laughs> I think that's, but I, hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. And then he said, "RIP LSU's team. The draft hit them like a truck this year. How do you think they will do uh, with no, no camp? They'll finish top ten. 
I mean, yeah, I think I think LSU is going to be great. I mean, they've got a great culture set. They've got good coaches, and they've are they going to win the talent. national championship every year? No. They, are they going to have a season like they had last year? No. Nobody will for a long, 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 long time. Yeah, I mean, that was. But, but no, will they? Will they still be really ever. good? Sure. Will they be better than 80, 90 percent of the rest of the country? Absolutely. Yeah, I think I think they're going to. And they beat Ohio State, Clemson, and Alabama every year. Probably, Probably not. It's tough. That's really hard to do. But they are going to be pretty good, I think. So it, it may be kind of tough for the defense, you know, it switch over from Aranda to uh, Bo Pelini, but you got if as long as you got the the Jimmys and the Joes, you're gonna be all right. And they got a good culture down there, so I'm I'm not worried. If about Bo Pelini got in early enough. This was not a, a, a you know a situation where Aranda took the job pretty quickly. Yeah, and no, it was it was at Bo the end of the there. And Bo's a stable, established coach. Yeah, he'll be fine. He'll he'll be fine. Let's move on. Let's talk.